You are watching Bear Ministries. So basically, uh, we wanted to do a video on getting along, and it just so happens this is our eighth, almost anniversary, but this is the day I proposed to like eight years ago. We already went over the story, so you can catch episode one if you guys want to check it out. But basically, we wanted to do a video to help the couples, all right? Divorce rates are climbing, and it's not just the world, it's Christians as well. And then there are Christians who are not divorcing, but they're living unhappy. And that's something that God does not want us to do. He wants us to be happy. Not just happy, but he wants us to be just faithful. Because on days when you're not happy, because you're not going to always be happy. He just wants us to be faithful to him and his word. When you're not happy, you know, you can have your hope in him. You know, you use his word and what his, he promised. And then in, in return... It give you peace in that situation and then, you know, it lifts up your spirit. That's what And one thing that we've always tried to, to, to kind of push is something we found out ourselves is that uh, I'm not looking for my happiness in my wife. All right. I'm not depending on her to make me happy. I have to find happiness in Christ and his word and his promise. That is where I find my happiness. It's not. Yeah. It, yeah. Man, we, let you down. we as humans anyway, we are we moody. We have our days. So if we're looking for our happiness in another person, it's going to disappoint us. They're going to let us Every down time. because I mean, we're not designed to be fulfilling, you know, or the judge, the magistrate, whoever it was, the, the pastor, and you got married to that person that hopefully is sitting next to you watching this. You didn't have a frown on your face. You weren't upset. You had high hopes. You you had uh, uh, ideals and you had goals for your marriage and things that you wanted to happen. And sometimes, whether it's finances, where there's a lot of different things that come into play, that happiness is gone. And we want to help you get that back. I have to remember to be careful of how I treat my wife because God is watching. All right, that's what we're here for today. And that's what we believe the Holy Spirit is. You know, it, it sticks with you. This one thing that, that has always spoke to me, having the joy of the Lord. And you don't have the joy of the Lord until you get to know the Lord. You know, the joy comes through the Holy Spirit and fulfilling, you know, being obedient and just spend the time with him. You know, that's where you get the joy in your spirit. I definitely should honor God in the way I treat my husband. And we we understand that some of you guys uh, that's watching this are already married, or some of her, some of you are aspiring to be married. It doesn't matter. You guys, as long as you guys are pulling each other, there's going to be sometimes I'm down, she pulls me up. There's sometimes she's down, I pull her up. That's what a marriage is. All right, it's sacrifice. That's the biggest thing we have to remember. Okay, so basically from the beginning, you both wanted, and you got to remember that you both wanted this. So it's up to you guys to both make it work. Sometimes you may be in a situation where you may be with someone who doesn't want to make it work. The Bible says for us to basically work out our own salvation. Christian who has radical faith. And some days you're not going to have that. Your spouse is not going to have that. So if you continue to stand on the word of God, you trust God, you continue to go before God because you can't, nothing can be fixed outside of God. Right, nothing's sustainable. Now you might end up trying thinking you fix it, it's only temporary. The sustaining power of God is what you want to focus on, okay? God, you have to have complete trust and faith in him. You have to do the same things you did in the beginning of the marriage, all right? You have to treat your wife like she's your girlfriend, meaning the things you did to get her. You cannot change those things. And because in the beginning, if, if everything feels good, everything is flowing. Endorphins that my husband was <laughs> talking about, you all of that, you just like on a high. You know, you have that. And then once you get married, you know it kind of, 
Oh, well, and, and the thing is, sometimes we're so busy. Close. Yeah, we're so busy pointing the finger at the other person and we're not working out what's wrong with us, all right? And that's how God blesses you. When you worry about yourself, you focus on yourself instead of the blame game. Now, there are some things that are blameable. Practicing infidelity and, and a lot of different things that you might be going through or have gone through. But God is still able. God can still fix your situation. God can still reach into that heart of that person. Uh, we were just praying, and I'm not going to say their name, but we were just praying. And I wanted to bring it up. We were just praying and, and going through in this situation with another couple. One of them basically inboxed us and was asking prayer and help and things like that. And the situation, I'm not, I'm going to be honest with you. The situation looked bad, okay? It looked like the other person was not trying to make this work and they wanted an excuse. But it, it, when the other person doesn't want you, that makes you want to give up. I've been in that situation before. Everyone probably has I been in that situation I can also before. relate as well. And it's not that the other person just want to give up. It's just times got hard. And the fire, is they, it's like you sitting on the fire. When I used to have troubles in relationships, I always run. Troubles in any area, you want to run. That's your first instinct, like for certain people, is to run. Some people's first instinct is to fix things. I can relate to that person that just wanted out because sometimes when you don't have a solution, you don't have an answer, and this person is not hearing you, and you feel like, what's the use? You just want to run. You know what? I know that's why there's a popular saying going around that people want the weddings, they don't want the marriage. And that's a true statement. It's because we're not we're not understanding when you go down that aisle what that really means. That is a bond. That is a spiritual connection with that person. God that God, yeah, God says God. that you are you have become one. He's not just saying that just because he said y'all come together, y'all is we got the right, same last name. Yeah. We're talking about spiritually, you have been it's a connection. When you look at this spiritual, there is a spiritual connection, not just physical. And what's funny, I can tell a joke it seems like married couples have been together for a long time start to even look like each other. So, yeah, so, but it's a spiritual connection that you have to understand that it's going to happen. It's not just a piece of paper. It's not just a boyfriend-girlfriend. It's not just a, a temporary contract. This is a lifelong commitment. And we even believe that this commitment goes on through heaven. And that God created and that he takes very serious. You know, that's the way I, look, I view my marriage. I just feel like, I feel like it's my responsibility to honor God in this thing, this covenant. So it's not just about I or just about him. It's about God. So how you act, how you handle situations, how you talk to each other, how you talk about each other, whatever the case may be, you under God. Who commandments that God gave in the, in the New Testament that he said that you should follow and it covers all of the law. It covers everything. The Ten Commandments covers the law. And it says to love God more than anything, all right? But then it says to treat your neighbor as yourself. So imagine how much you have to treat your spouse, which is really yourself. If you think about it, you must treat them the way you want to be treated. So even when it's times you don't want to, you may wake up mad. You may, may wake up angry. You may not want to deal with them no more. You may be tired of the, the nitpicking. They might be petty. Whatever the case may be, you throw that smile on your face and you understand and know that God sees everything you're doing and that when you are acting a certain way and you don't want to and you are basically subjecting yourself to the spirit and not to the flesh. When you deny your flesh and you say, hey, I'm going to deny how I feel right now and I'm going to treat them the right way. I want to talk bad to them. Some of y'all want to cuss them out. Stop cussing too. All right. Stop taking a foul. But trust God. All right. And, and just say, it, apologize even when it's not your fault. I know we're not going to understand that. Yes. We don't want to understand that. Yes. Yeah. The flesh doesn't want to understand that. And, and, and some of you are not going to understand anything we're saying because you may still be carnal. But understand, if you give your life to Christ and you depend on Jesus Christ and you and you depend on his word, if God can create and hold this world together, gravity is just enough to keep us from floating away God and, and not enough to crush you. us. Yeah, and then he can keep the water where it's at and not in the air. He can feed the birds of the air. He can do all these different things. Why can't he help your relationship? Why can't he solve it if you get it? He has the power to lose, you know, some people's heart. Like Bear said, if you when you read your word, it's all in there for one. But for two, this is a reminder to me because I'm in reading my Bible. I'm in the um, chapter where, you know, God is moving the heart of somebody. And that that, to, that strikes home. That, you know, ties into what we're talking about as well. God has that power to either make somebody stubborn, because that's what he called it in the Bible. He, he made Pharaoh stubborn. 
He won't right. let the people go. He can move the heart of your spouse, though. You just have to trust God when you have to go before God. You can't come down to their level, especially if they're not looking right. You want to give it to God, and you want to keep pushing and pushing because nobody can fight against God. And God can give you peace in the middle of the storm. Okay, and we we'll do the same example where you had the uh, the Israelites who was going through the Red Sea that got it parted. That was it was raging around them. Okay, the, it was raging around them. It, it could have crushed them. I mean, the, the power of those waves coming down on them, if God would allow it, would have crushed and killed every last one. We are saying that because this is how the Holy Spirit works. There's three propositions. I guess you want to say propositions of how the Holy Spirit works. It's basically the Holy Spirit leads you. The Holy Spirit fills you. And then the Holy Spirit, Spirit empowers you, all right? Dunamis. It empowers you to do a work, okay? And that is what we should be seeking in our marriage, is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because then you will know how to treat and act. The Bible, every scripture will make sense. And when the Bible says, be slow to speak, be slow to anger, and, and you guys, somebody just probably quote the rest of the verse, but it, it's telling you to be slow to speak. You don't have to just hurry up and say something. All right, Jesus Christ would never lost the argument, never lost the battle, and sometimes he didn't say a word. Think about that. Sometimes he didn't have to say a word, and sometimes even when I, I, I've had to see, and I'm going to speak for myself, my wife can speak for herself. But it's time the situation where I want to argue. I know I'm right about something, and I want to show her what she did wrong, and I just be quiet. And I'm like, you know what? And I don't always. I'm not perfect. But then sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm gonna do it the Holy Spirit way. I'll be quiet. I don't treat her differently. I still give her a kiss, you know, because she'll tell you. And I had definitely had to treat my wife the way I want to be treated. Am I giving what I asked for? We want, we want to argue our point. We yeah, want to, we we want want to, to be, be right. Hard. We want to be right. We want to argue our point. We want the other person to feel us. Feel. That's our thing. We have some powerful spirits. And we just want to be heard. Right. We want to be felt. We, we, want, want, to be we, right. want, we want this thing to we make want that sense to, to each other. So it's like we we, we there. We going there. We going there. Like we don't right. argue, but we debate. Like I, right. I would say our thing is like we do a lot of debate. And we got some strong personalities. Right. And God doing some things through our marriage. But when we get hit that word. Us, but then the Holy Spirit be like, wait, what is, what, what is going on? Sometimes I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm not telling, I'm not lying, I'm not exaggerating. I, I would do that. And then she'll come to be like, you know, I was wrong. I apologize. And I'll be like, oh, man, that's good. Not like, all the time. Then he'll come to me and be like, I was wrong. You know, he'd be wrong most of the time. <laughs> so, kidding. yeah. So, uh, that's that. Just follow us for a minute, okay? So, selflessness. What does that mean to you guys? Spite of whatever situation you're in, you put someone else before yourself. Absolutely. And that's what we try to teach our kids. Like, hold the door. You might be in a hurry one. You might be like 20 minutes late for work. It's God puts you in situations sometimes where you have to use, you know, what you're being taught. To be selfless, you have to be in a situation where you have to learn things. It ain't just going to be, oh, damn, I um, bless you with the spirit of selflessness and now you have it and you're going to be selfless for the rest of your life. You're going to always be put in a situation where you have to exercise that. So and that's what you look for when learning something. Selflessness to me is how we were when we first got married or how we were when we first got together. Everything you did was for them first. If you ate, you fixed their plate first. If you did this, it was for them first. And then over time, because we start thinking about ourselves first, we start becoming selfish as the marriage goes on. So selflessness is something you have to understand when you get married. You have to absolutely understand that it does. it's no longer about you. It's no longer about me and what you deserve. It's about what you can do for them. And if you are their servant and they are your servant. If you both have that same mentality, then marriages will last. Yeah. Okay, because that is a, a attribute of, of God. All right, and that is something that has to be learned. Like my wife just said before, patience has to be learned. Patience has to be something that you that you exemplify to each other. You have to be patient with everything. So when they're talking to you, when you're angry, when they have something to say, you have to be a good listener too and not just be wanting to speak. And that's my problem. And I do that a lot of times because I'm not listening. I'm, I'm quiet to say what I want to say yeah. and quiet to speak, you know, and not quiet to listen. So you got to be quiet to listen that what they have to say, no matter if you disagree or not, is important. Long suffering. 
Okay? Long suffering means that no matter your situation, you must understand that God is still good. It doesn't matter if you guys have financial problems. It doesn't matter if you guys are having problems in the bedroom, with problems, whatever. Long suffering is something that a marriage is going to go through. You're going to be attacked in your marriage, and not only attacked, but God is going to give you trials in your marriage. All right? He's going to give you trials for the rest of your life. And these things that help us grow. If you don't have these trials, if you don't go through anything, you'll never understand. And I say it all the time. If you don't have rain, you'll never appreciate the sun. And that's a true statement because that's the only way you're going to understand that uh, to be happy. If you are always happy, if your spouse was always perfect, that would be a terrible marriage. Honestly, you may not think of it that way, but if things was always perfect, sometimes having that downtime allows you to appreciate the good times. We should be like, we don't go through nothing. Right. I need to find an argument. <laughs> I just I just really believe long suffering is exactly what it what it is. You just you 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 just carrying your cross. Carrying your cross. That means whatever God um, allows to hit you or in, in, or encounter you in any way, you just take it and you trust him with it and you, you ask yourself what you know, you ask God, you ask yourself, what can I learn? You know, doing this trial or this, you know, whatever test, whatever it is. Learning how to go through things despite your whatever season. There, there. I will say this. There's a lot of people who regret an early exit of their marriage. There's a lot of people who regret it and wish they had to work harder, wish they had to, you know, and, and that's what long suffering is. Long suffering is not giving up. It's, it's remembering that God made a promise to you in the beginning of that marriage that you believe, and he's going to keep that promise throughout the marriage, no matter how bad things look. Some of us have the wrong friends around us, the wrong situations, and you're around people that are uh, giving you the wrong advice. We talked about that in the last episode, so please catch that episode if we talked, and it was called Bad Advice. Don't take advice from somebody for one that's not married that's not spiritually minded if you're spiritually minded okay because these people are unequally yoked just like you would be if you was to marry somebody unequally yoked you cannot take their advice all right you have to take advice from the word of god and the word of god is that it's going to be some bad times it may happen for years. We've struggled. People think what they want to think about our relationship, but we've gone through some financial struggles. It's been happening for since the beginning of our marriage. It's ups and downs. It's up and down. But it's enough to where if we didn't have God, we probably wouldn't even be together right now because of this. Because you think about, oh, it would, the way we used to do things, the way you did this, and some of that was scheming, some of that was doing stuff that was wrong to get money. And 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 that is something that you learn in marriage. Long suffering is something we gotta, you have to be prepared for, and that is fasting together as a couple, praying together as a couple. Yeah, really. the, the, the whole walk, this whole journey is just sticking to Christ, trusting in Jesus, going to Him through and about everything. If you stick close to God, you establish that intimate relationship, you read His Word, you pray, you trust Him. I mean, daily. It's so easy to just trust God all day, talk to Him all day, pray. I mean, you be having a conversation with somebody and still praying in my head at the same time. It ain't that you just gotta fall to your knees. But if you stick closer to God, it'll be so That's easy right. to hear Him. It's about hearing Him and listening to Him and following His and you, life. And, and if some of us not, we all are on different levels of our walk, right? And a lot of it is learned. It is learned through trial. It's learned through these situations. So the long suffering situation is to build you, not to break. If you trust God, and you're trying to live for God and you believe in Christ God and you put your faith in God, then that long suffering is not to destroy you or your relationship, but it's to build you and help you. You may have a testimony. You may be able to help someone. One, one huge thing we must talk about is self-evaluation, all right? Have to evaluate yourself. People that are bad self-evaluators are good accusers, all right? These are people that can see everything in everyone else. The Bible says to get the mold out your own eye or the law. These are worldly prophets. Yes. <laughs> yes, worldly up. problems, yes. So self-evaluation, and that is the hope, that is found through the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit convicts you, when the Holy Spirit lets you know, like, listen, what you just said was wrong, how you came to your wife was wrong, how would you feel if she came to you like that? That's how the Holy Spirit sounded to me. And it's my conscience, it's the Holy Spirit, it's a lot of different things going on there. The Holy Spirit got a whole Bible verse on self-evaluating. Yes. How could you see the mold in your brother's eye and you don't see it in your own yes. eye? And you you only recognize the things in other people because those are the same things that you struggle with. That's the that's how God works. He shows you yourself in other people. It's that simple. And whenever you feel that you made it to the point where you you reach perfection, then you need to get on your knees because something wrong with you. <laughs>
You need I to understand that. Yeah. I've done anything today. You are not perfect. It's something you do in even in a relationship. Even if relationships not working out right, it's something you can still do better. One thing we want to want to actually reference to is Prayer Room. That's an awesome movie for marriages. I I say that. No War that's Room. My favorite one is Fireproof. Fireproof. Now, that's yeah, my that's a good one. one. But I, I want to say War Room. I'm sorry, not Prayer Room. War Room is an awesome movie, and and that's I've used that reference to people who have came to us with marriage problems, and to even to, to to put the to finish the story. I didn't even finish it earlier. The couple uh, uh, that was coming to us about the marriage stuff, it's working out now, and it didn't look like it was. It looked like the other person had given up. They didn't want it no more. They was talking about divorce. They was ready to go, and this person thought it was over with too. And they are now dating again. They we are now other, getting back um, here. That's awesome. In Christ to thank as well because they was absolutely praying. they was praying you know, and. and Going before God. And it wasn't us. Yeah. It wasn't us. This is just a story. Yeah. I wanted to let you guys know that you may be going through, but there's somebody who's going through worse mm -hmm. and made it through. So how how about you? Why not you? You know, that's what you gotta God, understand. Why you, not me? You gotta get to the point where you know, like this is God. He is sovereign over everything. Right. He can take care of my little situation. My situation may look big to me, but to God, our situations are so small. If people just only understood that, like you have to meditate on who God really is, so especially to be able to trust him. You don't trust nobody you don't know. So get to know God intimately and you will see. Absolutely.